hello everyone and welcome back uh, to the classroom session 5 for the uh, video course on engineering geology. Today we are going to learn uh, different aspects of uh, physical properties of minerals uh, and we will try to identify different minerals based on uh, their different types of physical properties. We will try to list them and we will try to see how they differ uh, from mineral to mineral. But as is the practice, uh, we are going to answer, we are going to prepare the answers for the problems given in the previous presentation. So the question set that we had in the last presentation uh, are, uh, went like this. Explain the physical principle, uh, explain the principles of LIDAR survey. Uh, let me explain with a sketch. So what is done essentially is from an aircraft we emit radar actually lidar uh, uh, laser pulses and those pulses are made to bounce off of the topographic features. So this is our aircraft and there is a laser source on board the aircraft and that emits pulses of laser signals and there is an onboard instrumentation system that actually picks up the uh, calculates the two way travel time of the laser pu pulse and it also keeps track of the positional attributes of the aircraft from those information uh, it actually computes the x y and z coordinate uh, or the the two horizontal and the one and the vertical coordinate of the point off of which the laser pulse was reflected. Now as the aircraft progresses forward what is done is to emit a series of laser pulses in this pattern of an elliptic spiral and using information from each one of those pulses together with all the other information, all the other uh, two way travel times for other pulses from the same area, the survey actually computes the, the topography of that particular area. So that in a nutshell is the principle of a LIDAR survey. So this one is the laser pulse. Uh, travel path you have to realize that because of the atmospheric conditions some corrections are necessary on computing the uh, two way travel uh, before before the uh, topographic attributes of a particular point on the surface of the earth can be computed okay the second question that we had earlier was that which one among gravel, sand and clay is likely to show the greatest reflectance in an aerial photograph. What we said in the previous lesson is that poorly drained and fine grained uh, soils, they actually tend to appear darker on, a, uh, on an aer aerial photograph. So from that uh, perspective, the areas underlain by gravel etc. gravels or sands etc. are going to appear much brighter compared to the areas underlain by uh, underlain by poorly drained clay soils or peat 
or those kind of uh, those kind of uh, similar poorly drained areas. Uh, this is actually a general guidance though, because the color of the deposit itself is going to affect the brightness of the image depending on the uh, wavelength that is used in capturing the aerial photograph. Okay. The third problem that, that the third question that I asked was that how can a an old landslide feature be identified from an aerial photograph. Now, if the landslide is large, then it is relatively to easy to identify what is the landslide scarp from in an aer aerial photograph. Secondly, if the landslide is young, then the growth of vegetation on the failure mass is relatively poor compared to the surrounding area uh, in a in an otherwise vegetated uh, landscape. So, th these features are used commonly by engineering geologists in identifying landslide features on the uh, on a series of aerial photographs. Sometimes they also use uh, time lapse images uh, captured several years apart that cover the same uh, area to identify whether there is any landslide movement or not or the landslide which was earlier there has already stabilized or not. Okay. The fourth question that was asked was that was what is a false color composite. Now, false color composite is a, pro is a procedure that allows us to obtain a visual graphic uh, present uh, or, or, or a visual presentation of a series of satellite images. Now, I said in the last presentation that satellite images cover a large range of uh, electromagnetic, a large range of wavelengths within the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, some of those bandwidths are in the area which is not in the visible uh, visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So, in order to get a visual image, those uh, wavelengths need to be mapped onto the visual wavelength using some mapping scheme and the composite that are obtained by superposition of individual uh, of of of, of uh, images in individual channels uh, after the mapping is called is called uh, false color composite the name actually indicates that the color that appears on those images are not true color but they are a figment of the mapping scheme uh, of of getting from the non visible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum to the visible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, so, that takes care more or less the problems or the questions that we that I asked in the previous presentation. Now, we move on to the subject matter of this presentation. So, we begin with the objectives of this lesson what we try to learn from this lesson. We try to learn what are the different types of properties, uh, what are the different types of properties of minerals in a sense. Now, in order to do that, we first list the types of solids that is uh, encountered in day to day activities. Then secondly, we try to list the physical properties of mineral crystals that are of importance in uh, from the standpoint of engineering geology. And thirdly, we try to distinguish different types of common rock forming minerals based on uh, how those physical properties that we are going to learn differ from each other from depending on whether you are talking about mineral A or you are talking about mineral B. Okay. Now, first we try to learn 
what are the different types of solids that you might encounter uh, on a day to day basis. The solids are primarily of two types. The first one is called amorphous solid and the second one is called crystalline solid. Now, what is an amorphous solid? Amorphous solids have got a haphazard atomic structure. So, the atoms individual atoms within the within the solid are all haphazardly arranged. There is no pattern whatsoever within the uh, within the matrix. Now, the examples of that type of solid a very common example is essentially uh, a, 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 a we can we can think about glass. So, glass is very similar in all the other respects to a liquid, but uh, it is it has got some shear strength unlike liquids. So, we call it we classify it as a solid, but just like liquids within the matrix of a of a glass piece the atoms are all haphazardly laid out. The second the second type of uh, material the second type of solid is called a crystalline solid. In crystalline solid what you got your individual atoms they are all laid out in a regular pattern. So, so within the matrix you will have a regular repetitive pattern uh, there are there are dislocations there are irregularities but they appear uh, they appear uh, that is th those dislocations or irregularities they are not the actual i mean they are not a common feature on the i mean, I mean they do not cover most of the volume uh, that is uh, that that comprises the solid mass so all the minerals all the minerals are uh, not are within the category of crystalline solids example of a crystalline solid we show a an example of a of chloride mineral the atomic structure of a chloride mineral on this slide here and what you can see is a regular structure comprised of uh, comprised of aluminum hydroxide octahedra so these are aluminum hydroxide and they are of octahedral form and then this layer the layer on top of it is comprised of silica tetrahedra. Then again this particular layered structure is going to repeat. So, you can start you, ca you can you can see that the aluminum octahedra are again starting to reappear. So, this one is aluminum uh, aluminum hydroxide uh, octahedra once again. So, this kind of repetitive structure actually is typical of uh, of minerals and uh, we we are not going to be concerned with the amorphous solids in this series of presentations as such. So, this one is an example this this one the the, the slide that was uh, just shown gives you an example of chloride mineral which is a very common clay forming mineral. All the other rock forming minerals we are going to consider in this study is, com is of comparable is of comparable nature in the sense that the layout of individual atoms is quite repetitive. Now, 
how do we define minerals? Minerals are essentially naturally occurring crystalline solids. There are approximately 3000 different types of uh, minerals in terms of uh, chemical compositions and these minerals include widely occurring, uh, there are only a few minerals out of these 3000 that occurs very widely on the surface of the earth and there are approximately 9 such minerals and we are going to consider them in detail uh, somewhat in this lecture or in one of the lectures later on in this present in this series of presentation. Now, uh, the widely occurring rock forming minerals can range a wide variety of different types of minerals. Some of these minerals could be quite uh, expensive actually. So, gemstones for that matter are examples of those expensive minerals. Uh, uh, diamond is also a type of mineral actually and that is one of the most expensive uh, gemstone that one can find. Then the on the other end of the spectrum in terms of price is, uh, is minerals which do not have any engineering value. Uh, somewhere in between are engineering minerals which are used in construction activities. Okay. Now, we now get on to different types of physical properties of minerals. The first one, the first property that we are going to consider here is the color of minerals and color is actually one of the properties that can be used to distinguish from one mineral to the other. For example, you can think about gypsum, gypsum has got a whitish white color. On the other hand, if you talk about hematite, hematite has got a dark color. So, based on what color it is, we roughly can identify minerals, but color is not a very good identifier of minerals because colors may change uh, as, the, as, as the mineral is exposed to the nature or the color may vary depending on what kind of impurity is present within the mineral uh, mineral crystals crystal lattices so depending on all these things depending on all these things although you, you you understand that although color can be taken as one of the attributes of uh, one of the identifying attributes for different types of minerals but it does not conform I mean it is very difficult to distinguish minerals purely based on the color itself. Uh, you can think about several minerals actually which show a wide range of colors. Uh, those minerals are called uh, allochromatic. On, in, in contrast isochromatic minerals they are of a single, single uniform color. Now, allochromatic minerals, example of allochromatic minerals is, uh, is feldspar. On the other hand, isochromatic, an example of isochromatic mineral is a mineral called kyanite. The name kyanite itself comes from, comes from uh, the Greek word which show which Greek word Greek name for the color blue uh, that that actually means that you are looking you are talking about a mineral which has got a blue color. There could be pseudochromatic minerals also pseudochromatic minerals have got a play of color. So, depending if you if you take a piece of that mineral on your hand and if you turn it around depending on from which direction light is coming you are going to see a play of color, the color is going to change. Example for that one is diamond, then, then uh, there, is, there is another possibility which can, uh, which can, which is also an attribute of pseudochromatic minerals and that is iridescence. 
iridescence means a rainbow like coloring appear on the surface and tarnish is another type of attribute for pseudochromatic mineral and tarnish is i mean if you if you if you keep this kind of mineral exposed to the nature then the color becomes dull an example of a mineral that shows this kind of coloring uh, uh, which which tarnishes is chalcopyrite uh, that is copper pyrite copper uh, copper iron sulfate now the second mineral property that we are going to consider is luster what is luster luster essentially gives the property that shows the reflectance characteristics of the sur of the mineral surface for example we take a mineral surface and if you have got this kind of a reflectance property from that mineral surface then the the surface is going to look quite i mean it is going to reflect uh, it is going to reflect light that may come from another source rather brilliantly and this kind of this kind of uh, reflectance property gives rise to uh, a thing called often it gives rise to a thing uh, a type of luster called metallic luster which has got a very shiny appearance on the other hand you could also think about a surface like this about the surface of a mineral which is like this and the way it reflects different wavelengths of light is like this so in a sense this type of surface upon reflecting it is going to scatter different wavelengths in different directions and this type of this type of uh, this type of behavior actually gives rise i mean it it actually gives rise to a luster which is not shiny not shiny and this thing often classifies is classified as non metallic last year getting back yeah here it is it is indicated on this slide it is indicated that one uh, th that you could have metallic luster as shown in the first bullet there on or you could have several other types of lustres and these things these lustres are non metallic non metallic whereas this one here was a metallic lust was the metallic luster okay so what are the different types of non metallic luster then non metallic luster could be vitreous luster uh, which looks like which which makes the mineral appear like a like like a piece of glass an example of that being quartz then there could be uh, there could be uh, pearly luster 
which makes the mineral appear it, it gives a texture the surface texture of the mineral appears makes it appear like the surface of a pearl. Uh, then there could be silky luster where the mineral appears like silk fabric uh, not quite as shiny as as uh, as uh, a metallic uh, mineral met, uh, a mineral with a metallic luster but quite shiny otherwise then there could be resinous luster in which uh, it, it actually has got a very peculiar feel when one uh, one actually runs uh, his or her finger on top of the mineral surface it has got a slippery uh, slightly slippery feel uh, that kind of luster is called resinous luster and finally we can have dull luster like the surface of a piece of uh, piece of chalk and this kind of luster is typical of mineral bauxite. Uh, so these things are listed over there in the slide that was shown uh, with the examples and there was there is an example on the right side of the slide for a non metallic luster uh, which is shown uh, which is shown here that is a piece of gypsum actually and a a metallic luster given by an example of showing a piece of metallic pyrite you can see the shiny uh, pieces over there in that portion in the metallic pyrite. So, that is actually typical of metallic luster. Okay. Now, we go to another mineral property this is the third one actually first of all we considered color then we considered luster and this is the third one and this is called streak. Now, color was when, when we talked about color we talked about the piece of entire mineral. Now, if we talk about the color of powdered mineral then that attribute is given the name last uh, given the name streak. So, if you actually take a piece of uh, a piece of uh, a, a, a hard piece of quartz and rub another mineral on top of that piece what you are going to get you are going to get a a, uh, a a marking depending on what is the color wh what is the what is the color of powdered mineral and that particular color is going to identify the, the uh, going to give the streak of that particular mineral. Now streak is a very important property and that actually allows us to distinguish several uh, pairs of mineral for which you have got very similar properties uh, very similar properties otherwise, but the streak is different. Example for that are two minerals chromite and magnetite. These two minerals are very very similar in properties even the magnetic properties of these type of these minerals could be uh, uh, does not sometimes allow them to be distinguished from each other, but the the streak of chromite is black uh, a streak of chromite is essentially brown in color whereas, the streak of magnetite mineral is black in color. Now, let me give you the chemical composition also of these two minerals. So, that uh, that actually uh, in order to in order to complete the uh, the discussion here chromite essentially is is uh, it, it has got this kind of chemical composition whereas magnetite the chemical composition of magnetite is 
this uh, is so that is the chemical composition of magnetite so the plus signs on the um, used as superscript in the symbols you all know that that indicates the valence of uh, of uh, of the atoms and uh, and here for the for the magnetite actually the iron the the triple valent iron actually can be substituted by chromium in that case the chemical structure the chemical composition actually of of uh, of magnetite could be actually very similar to the chemical composition of chromite so so this is actually this actually tells you this actually illustrates how difficult it could be at times to distinguish one particular type of mineral from a second type of mineral okay now the other the 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 other property the other attribute other physical attribute of minerals that allows us to distinguish different types of minerals is hardness so how do you how do you actually uh, what is hardness hardness essentially means resistance of a particular mineral from being scratched so the more resistance more resistance there is against scratching then the hardness is greater the scale is not a numerical scale but it is rather a of a phenomenological uh, type and this scale is given the name moles so the scale goes like this the mineral talc has got a mo of 1 then gypsum has got a mo of 2 then comes calcite uh, 3 in the in the mo scale fluorite uh, 4 in this scale apatite orthoclase quartz topaz corundum and diamond diamond is the hardest mineral that many of you already know it has got a uh, value it has got a hardness of 10 on the mo scale of hardness now sometimes it is difficult to see how how actually hardness of a particular type of mineral is determined is to have different pieces of minerals available and if there is an unknown mineral given for identification then that mineral is scratched using all these different minerals so for example if uh, if we can just scratch the mineral using mineral talc then the hardness of that particular mineral is only one on the other hand if we have to take a piece of diamond to scratch that mineral then that mineral is it, it has got a mo scale of hard it has got a hardness of 9 on the mo scale of hardness uh, this is the way of rigorously finding out what is the uh, what is the hardness of a given mineral now more often than not during field reconnaissance missions you would not have the you would not have with you available all these different minerals uh, uh, that you can use that you can try to scratch the unknown mineral with in order to identify the hardness of that particular mineral so in that situation actually as a rule of thumb you use uh, for example fingernail a fingernail typically has got a hardness of 2 then you could use a piece of copper or brass that has got a hardness of 3 a steel nail could be used it has got a hardness of 5 a piece of glass uh, can be used to scratch the other mineral it has got a hardness of 5.5 so if if for instance if you could uh, if you could scratch a mineral using a piece of glass on the and you could not scratch the mineral using steel nail then the hardness of that particular unknown mineral is somewhere between 5 and 5 and a half then you could take a porcelain plate of porcelain 
uh, a, a kind of plate that is used for finding out streak of different minerals and porcelain plate has got a hardness of seven and a half. Now, hardness is also I mean hardness the property hardness could also be tricky at times. Now, for some minerals hardness is anisotropic. So, for example, you take the mineral kyanite that we uh, discussed earlier, uh, kyanite has got a blade like structure which we will uh, which we will come to see later on in this presentation. If you actually try test the hardness in the direction in the sharper direction, then the hardness is going to be different from the hardness that is measured in the direction perpendicular to the sharper direction. Then hardness could change if weathering actually decomposes the minerals near the surface of a particular aggregate of minerals. So, these are these are a few catches actually you should be aware of when you are trying to identify the hardness of a particular mineral. Now, the other mineral property of interest is the cleavage of uh, crystals. Now, cleavage when you try to break a crystal, then crystals break on uh, on on the on the on on definite planes of cleavage. So, if there is definite cleavage, then the form the 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 way those cleavage planes are oriented with respect to each other that will give you enough clue uh, in order to distinguish many different types of minerals cleavage could could be cubic or it could be rhombohedral or it could be pris prismatic or it could be basal so these are these are actually the the characteristics as as you can see from the names of uh, names that are used for classifying these things, they actually talk about crystal shapes. Now, the other uh, way of classifying cleavage is eminent, where you have got very distinct cleavage uh, surface, uh, example for that is mica and then in, in order in the decreasing order of uh, order of uh, prominence of the cleavage surface is perfect, good, distinct and indistinct. So, uh, if you have got if you have got for instance a piece of chalk then that will not have any distinct cleavage. So, for that type of mineral you are going to classify uh, the, the, uh, the cleavage as indistinct. Now, if you have if you find if you find cleavage planes, then there could be one cleavage plane or there could be more than one cleavage planes. For instance, uh, for mica, biotite and muscovite, you have got one distinct cleavage plane. Then there could be there could be two cleavage planes that are oriented at 90 degree between each other. Those type of minerals include feldspar and pyroxene. Then there could be two directions, but they are not the included angle in with, uh, between those two directions is not 90 degree. Uh, an example being amphibole, then there could be three directions at approximately about 90 degree. Example being halite and galena, halite is essentially rock salt. Uh, there could be three directions but not at 90 degree example is calcite and dolomite and there are four directions uh, this is an octahedral structure and the example for that is fluorite some some examples of the different types of uh, cleavages uh, for instance we talked about we talked about one direction cleavage in one distinct direction example is a biotite mica, a dark colored mica in which the planes of the slide itself essentially uh, is the cleavage plane. Then the, the, 
the example of two cleavage planes is feldspar and this one is approximately at 90 degree you can see one of these cleavage planes here and the other one which is not very distinctly shown on this photograph and that is in a direction perpendicular to this uh, this uh, this direction that is appearing uh, straight on the plane of the slide here okay calcite it has got three cleavage planes one is this one one is that one there another is that one there and the other one is this one so you can see that the angle the angle between these cleavage planes is not 90 degree not 90 degree as we indicated earlier then this is the example of a flora i mean this is the example where you have got a you have got a rhombohedral uh, rhombohedral structure uh, which one and and here you have got several cleavage planes actually one two three four and there are there are so many on the other side uh, that is not appearing straight on as well so that kind of illustrates about how you could use cleavage planes in order to distinguish different types of minerals okay then the other physical property of interest is fracture now fracture when you try to break a mineral then the fracture could be smooth uh, as we saw when we talked about cleavage uh, it is quite analogous to that type of uh, type of uh, property here you have got a smooth fracture um, and when we talked about cleavage planes we talked about eminent cleavage for instance then fracture could be uneven uneven uh, when you have got when you have got uh, when you have got uneven fracture then the surface in which the the uh, the mineral aggregate breaks is going to be uneven as the name suggests and then there could be other types of uh, fractures like conchoidal fracture example being quartz and olivine and what is a conchoidal structure is essentially uh, when you try to break a piece of quartz it is going to it is going to break in surfaces that is slightly concave uh, you might have seen this kind of fracture when a piece of glass shatters as well you see a series of concentric uh, a series of uh, actually a concave surface developing uh, when you try to break certain pieces of glass as well now uh, fracture could be splintery when uh, the breaking is like is very similar to the type of fracture that you would get when you try to uh, break a piece of wood for example uh, the the piece of wood sometimes shatters in the form of splinters example for that is kyanite uh, then the mineral mineral can actually fracture as with hackley fractures hackley fractures essentially indicates that there are i mean the mineral breaks with sharp projections like uh, mineral copper actually breaks in this manner then the mineral could also break in a sectile manner sectile manner is uh, is a fracture that is typical when, uh, typical of graphite for example uh, you you all have used uh, graphite pencils when you try to when you try to sharpen the pencil using using a blade or something then you will see shavings of graphite actually comes out so that is a uh, an indication of sectile fracture and finally you you have earthy fracture uh, in which the mineral actually breaks in the form of powder example of that one is uh, uh, not actually it is not powder but the, but the surface at which it breaks 
it does not have any reflectance at all, it has got a dull appearance and that kind of that kind of mineral I mean that kind of example for that type of fracture is chalk. Okay. Then we get on to the other type of physical property that also allows uh, uh, different types of minerals to be distinguished from each other and that is called form crystal form uh, crystal form this is essentially physical shape physical shape that you get for different types of uh, different types of mineral crystals now there are several different types of several different types of uh, uh, forms uh, some of which we have already seen uh, the first one being tabular example for that is calcite and orthoclase the property of it is that it has got essentially a tabular form we are going to I am going to draw a few sketches once I list uh, all, the, all of all the different types of forms on this particular slide then next one is elongated uh, example for an elongated uh, mineral is quartz then crystals could be bladed the structure is just like you know uh, just like just like blades uh, it has got two flat surfaces and the distance between those two flat surfaces is relatively small then the fourth one is lamellar lamellar is essentially very similar to a bladed structure but here what you have got here the thickness of a lamina is rather small it is even smaller than a bladed form a, a, a mineral that is classi that classify as a bladed mineral then there are there could be foliated structure foliated structure an example for that is muscovite muscovite is uh, is a type of mica actually then there could be fibrous minerals which has got one long uh, dimension all the other dimensions of a piece of mineral is relatively short then there could be radiating type of minerals example is pyrite granular minerals in which uh, the entire mineral matrix is it appears as an assemblage of uh, gra of uh, mineral grains little bit coarse mineral grains example being chromite then there could be globular structure it is just like you know uh, an assemble uh, assembly of uh, of of minerals roundish roundish mineral pieces each of which looks like you know rounded pebbles uh, cemented together then there are reniform structure uh, example for globular mineral is hematite uh, reniform structure is very similar to a globular mineral in which each of those pieces each of those roundish pieces take the shape of a of a human kidney and finally you have got mammillary uh, that is also very similar to the globular and reniform structure but a mammillary mineral kind of looks like it, it make takes an appearance of uh, of a head of broccoli or uh, the appear I mean it is it is very similar in appearance to a head of broccoli or cauliflower now let us actually sketch out these different types of minerals these different types of mineral forms so we first talked about tabular form and a tabular form is going to be going to look like this so this is a tabular form uh, you could also have a another type of tabular mineral which sort of looks like that so here what you have got actually uh, so this is also another example of tabular mineral then uh, then you have got elongated structure let us take an example this could be an elongated structure This is elongated structure uh, 
then you have got you have got bladed structure that kind of looks like this this bladed structure uh, you could have foliated structure which has got in which this thickness is much smaller then this one becomes foliated you could get uh, let's let's take an example of uh, globular or reniform structure that kind of looks like this so this is globular reniform then you could have actually radiating structure which we did not actually illustrate so far radiating structure sort of looks like this uh, actually ice crystal is also it has got radiating structure so this is radiating and uh, then granular structure is sort of like this you the matrix starts appearing like an assemblage of different grains. So, this one is a granular structure. Okay, so, that kind of takes care of different types of crystal forms. Okay. There are several other types of mineral properties that also allows minerals to be distinguished from each other, one of which is specific gravity. Uh, for example, specific gravity of feldspar is 2.57. On the other hand, galena could have a specific gravity as high as 7.5 because of the presence of lead within the within the uh, chemical comp in, in the chemical composition then uh, you could also distinguish minerals depending on the uh, reactivity to different types of chemical reagents for example uh, reaction with hcl allows uh, allows distinguishing dolomites from limestone Dolomite, dolomite actually feebly reacts with HCl uh, hydrochloric acid, whereas, if, uh, whereas limestone actually vigorously reacts with HCl. Water solubility is another one, another property that allows uh, distinguishing one type of mineral from others. Limestone is weakly soluble in water, particularly if the limestone becomes, uh, becomes open structured its water solubility actually increases. Then magnetism is another property that allows uh, some minerals from, from being distinguished from other minerals, example being magnetite. Magnetite is strongly magnetic. And then there is you, you can also taste, uh, you can also distinguish minerals depending on what taste it is, uh, example being halite. Now, we want to summarize the summarize what we learnt in this particular presentation. Uh, we found we actually understand now how to dis, um, what, what is the distinction between amorphous and crystalline solids. We can list the meanings list uh, list and find the meanings of different types of physical properties that can be uh, that can be used to distinguish different types of mineral species and we got a few examples of how these uh, these physical properties can be used in distinguishing different common minerals and finally we end with a question set for you to ponder on uh, the first one is explain the difference between amorphous and crystalline solids uh, rock forming minerals are in which of the above two categories then explain the following terms iridescent mineral, mineral dull luster and more scale of hardness how hardness of a given mineral may change because of weathering that was that is the third question and fourth one is that what would you, would you expect 
streak and color of a mineral to be identical. Explain with an example. You try to answer uh, those questions uh, at your free time and when we meet again in for the next presentation, I am going to give you the answers for those examples. We are also going to meet uh, later on for a laboratory course, laboratory presentation in which we will take physical examples of different minerals and try to distinguish them uh, from each other depending on these, these properties that were listed in this presentation. Uh, so, with that I am going to uh, I am going to uh, I am going to I am going to uh, bring I am going to uh, end this presentation and until I meet you again uh, bye for now. Thank you very much. Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 3.2 of engineering geology. Uh, today's topic is crystallography and optical properties of minerals. As usual, uh, we are going to begin with a discussion of the previous uh, lessons question set. The first question that I asked last time around when we met was to was uh, uh, an exp I asked for an explanation of the differences between amorphous and crystalline solids. Now. Amorphous solids do not show any regular uh, pattern of uh, individual atoms that constitute the uh, solid. On the other hand, crystalline solids have got a regular pattern of atomic uh, structure, a regular and repetitive pattern of atomic structure uh, 